Good morning, sons. I'm just waking up. I'm in the shower and get ready, and then we're going to be shutting down some mining rigs and getting ready to upgrade power. Welcome to Friday. All right, all showered up. We have, well, we're waiting on the power company. They're still not here, but I'm going to start getting the rigs shut down here in a tad, and then we're going to pull out that carpet just because, well, it's old anyways and reduce fire hazard hopefully reduce temperatures a little bit and that's the goal of pulling that out so enjoy All right, sons, we have finally completed the full on mining room upgrade in my son's bedroom, like we talked about in yesterday's video. And let's go over the process. So we were already mining in there and there were a few things that needed to be done. So I had already upgraded to a 60 amp circuit that then split off into two 30 amps that then go to the 220 plugs that then obviously distribute out to the PDUs from APC. We've talked about this before. Uh, links for the PDUs and the switch will all be down in the description below if you want to use those if you're looking for options. We have a Cisco switch uh, 3650, pretty standard. Nothing too special. It's just one I already have had in so it, it's not that difficult to get it configured up if you guys have ever done any sort of uh, terminal command line stuff. There's tons of guys online, copy pasta, whatever you need and Google whatever you can't figure out and that gets set up pretty easy. These are unmanaged PDUs, so as far as that goes, that was pretty solidly easy as well. I do wanna get one that monitors amps so I can see how much room I have left over, especially on each individual circuit that's on the PDU, because you know, right now it's like kind of playing guesstimate, like I measure it like with a kilowatt and then I plug it over there, but you know, like, if I'm, I'm using higher rated power supplies, you know, one of them is a 2000 watt. I can't go over, you know, 110 
with that and figure out how to calculate that. So there's some things here that I'm still getting worked out and basically you guys get to join me along for the journey. Now I really wanted to remove the carpet to reduce the any kind of fire hazard. You know, I feel like if you can remove the carpets, that sort of thing, wherever you have your rigs, it's just safer. I've already done all the due diligence on, you know, uh, PCIe risers to SATA, PCIe to SATA power, that sort of thing. And I'm pretty safe as far as that goes, but you know, the safer you can be, the better. So we got the carpet ripped out. Now, luckily this was just a tack and pad carpet. So it was really extra additional easy once again, because I didn't have individual tacks going through the center of the room. All the tack pads were on the outside of the room. So it was really just take some pliers, rip it up in the corner, pull it all the way back, and then cut out where I wanted it to be cut out at. It was uh, the closet, we left the carpet carpet in there for now because there's a ton of stuff in there and then we left obviously the carpet in the hallway but that's all getting replaced anyways soon enough to where it's kind of like eh we'll go ahead and rip the carpet out here and we'll feel safer can sleep better at night we've already talked about the fire alarms that i replaced we went with like mesh fire alarms uh there's actually one in here so if one in the house goes off at any time then they'll all go off and we're good to go so after that um, like I said, we had to get all the tack strips up, so that took me a little bit of time. It still, I think, took me longer just to shut down and move the rigs out of the room than it did to do anything else. But all in all, moving the rigs out, cutting the carpet out, that took about an hour. Then I had to track down a truck to borrow or rent and head down to Home Depot, and we got ourselves a big industrial garage style shelving, and it's 90 inches long by 90 inches tall so it's big and hefty and it fits everything that i need to put on there which at this point we're at 11 rigs one of them being raven coin on 1063 gigs so don't think anything too crazy there the rest of them are a mix of 5700 xts 5600 xts and rx 580s i'm probably going to be phasing the rx 580s out here soon i just don't like mining with them it's the least reliable rig in the whole bunch. So I kind of want to just get rid of them at this point. And they, they're fine. They're 30 mega hash a second at like, you know, 100 watts or whatnot. But they, they seem to bounce at least once a day and sometimes more. And sometimes the GPUs drop off and so on. I probably need to troubleshoot a bit more though. That would be fair. So mama got home and helped me do the shelving. So we got that together, you know, with that spousal argument going on in the background here and there. And it was super awesome to have her help me get that together. She helped zip tie up some of the fans on the front of the cases. We have the Rosewell cases down there. We have two different models of the Rosewell cases and some of the models don't come with the fan uh, mounts in the front. So you have to uh, basically zip tie them underneath the GPU mount bar. It's fine, it works, it gets the job done. We have industrial like or server grade fans basically. So they are pumping out a ton. We have 80 millimeter fans in the back of those for exhaust. And so we got those lined out. We got the rigs lined out as well, like all of my open air frames. And basically I just measured how tall each of the rigs were and then just set the shelving up uh, as tall as I needed. So the, the ones with the rose wheel cases are closer together. And the step ladder gets me to the top and able to look over easily into the top open air rigs, no problem. So it's it turned out super awesome. I'm super happy with it. I think we've covered, yeah, the PDUs, we've covered the switch. Uh, we didn't cover, we covered the power. Now we had to, up, the reason we were able to do all this and have some downtime on the mining rigs is because the external panel was being upgraded. So I had a 200 amp panel, which we will be upgrading as well soon too, by the way, but we needed to go ahead and get that converted over to copper. And it sucks because when you do that, you have to call the power company, they have to shut down the power and then they have to turn it back on. You have to have the power company do that. And of course we scheduled this way back in like December, beginning of December and it didn't happen until February. Good job 
power company real timely. But anyways, it was pretty simple to have an electrician do it because that's what I did. Also, you have to be certified uh, here, master electrician, to get that done. Whoa, that was a goat that scared me. All right, all right, thanks for following on DLive. Anyways, so that got all done and we were able to basically upgrade that external panel. It looks awesome, super nice and clean, copper. Uh, the gas wasn't bonded uh, on my old setup, so I feel a lot better that we have a gas and a water line now bonded as well. So when you're looking at like doing mining and like that sort of thing, doing the electricity part to the best of your ability is like, super important and getting a good electrician to do it is probably recommended and if you're going to do something like upgrade panels and so on then you are going to have to have an electrician in most cities at this point so make sure you take into account the cost of that right so if you find like a good one like on angie's list or something like that total job depending on what you're doing for like that would be between two and four thousand dollars from what I've seen. Um, I paid oh, about two thousand, and it 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 just depends on like who you go with and and so on and so forth. But and that got us all the work with the line runs and everything. So pretty awesome. Uh, I super thankful that I had somebody able to come and help out with that and get that done for me and get the permits from the city. So that's kind of the biggest part with the whole electricity part and so on. It's not like crazy, but it's something to think about. Like it's not crazy difficult. None of this was, it's just things that you need to think about. We also have a, you know, fire extinguisher in that room as well as like in three or four rooms in the house. We have them everywhere. Uh, we have IP cameras for security. We are going to be looking at what we're doing for more more security because right now if you take a look at the windows we have basically an intake and an exhaust with box fans which works really well it's a lot better than trying to pump it out through some other means which i am looking at as well it really depends on which way we go uh, but I think that we will at least get the bars when uh, the windows barred probably this weekend and then addition in addition to that we're gonna I'm gonna add an external IP cam I got to get an outdoor one so we have the indoor ones or whatever fully wired up but we just need to get the, the outdoor one done so that's about it that is the update for the power upgraded we have copper lines coming in we have a dedicated 60 amp going over to there so by the way that put the calculation for anybody that's curious if you're trying to calculate power is going to be amps times of course your voltage so for a 120 you know if you're on a 20 amp 120 then you take that and multiply that out so to give you guys an idea right now we have 60 amps at 220 that gives us 13,400 watts and currently on the farm we are using about 9,000 watts. So I have about 4,000 watts of headroom before we upgrade to a 300 amp panel and add another 60 amp circuit in there. But that's kind of how you do the math if you're trying to do it yourself. That's kind of what you're looking at. All right, so hope this video was informational. I am beat, so that's probably why my tone's a little bit lower, but I still wanted to give you guys all of the information that I could. We have some videos coming out tomorrow. We'll have two videos on Saturday and Sunday, one in the morning to noonish and one in the afternoon uh, after dinner. And that'll be every weekend, two videos a day. And then we do a video a day, Monday through Friday here on this channel. So if you haven't hit the sub button, make sure you hit that sub button and hit that like button. Hit the bell if you can as well for notifications. The join button if you want access to Rocket Chat, make sure you click that. On mobile guys, I'm looking at how we can facilitate the join button. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that, but I am going to figure that out for you guys hopefully this weekend. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.